Hello guys and girls and welcome back to another Thorncraft 4.2 tutorial. So today we're going to be continuing on with the artifice uh, stuff and things. And if you remember the last video I did the whole infusion altar, I did a complete breakdown of it. If you haven't seen it, go and watch it as the very last, uh, it's the episode before this one. Um, I did a whole breakdown and laid everything out so you guys can understand it really, really well. Uh, you're gonna have to understand that if you're gonna have to, if you're gonna be making yourself your infusion altars later on, and just understanding how all of it is laid out. Cool. So we're gonna continue on today, like I said, with the artifice tab. I'm not gonna do anything too complicated today, so don't get yourself too excited. We're just gonna cover a couple of basic bits and pieces that you're gonna need to know before going into the other stuff. And if we've got time, we'll cover some other bits and pieces as well, but I don't wanna do this video too long today. So as you can see in the Artifice Tower, there is so much stuff, it's all scrambled around. Um, and there's little like single bits like this and this and this and this just off on its own and it's linked to nothing and I'm just like how what how am I meant to structure videos around this but we're gonna do it we're gonna figure a way so what I'm gonna cover today is basic artificing I'm gonna show you some of the basic things that you're gonna need throughout um, infusions and stuff like that I'm also gonna cover uh, the arcane lamp which we'll move on to later on with the infusion side of things and then i'm going to cover the arcane levitator as well i think that's all i've got ready also i've got the thermometer and goggles revealing you guys should know how to do them already but i'm going to cover them just in case you have just in case you guys don't know so very first thing uh, that we're going to look at is the primal charm primal charms form an important basis for any thaumaturgical constructs. They have no inherent power of their own beyond being able to focus and channel primal energy and essentially rumors persist that these charms have additional powers, but that is a little more than hearsay. Cool, so these things are very, very simple to make. Uh, just a couple of shards, all has to be done in this order as well. If you put them in a different order, it's not gonna work. It has to be air, fire, water, earth, order, entropy. Cool. Uh, balance chart in the middle, two gold ingots, and 25 of each aspect in your wand. And that gives you a primal charm. Cool. Uh, next couple of little bits and pieces we're going to look at. Uh, basic artificing. Uh, we've got the mundane amulet, mundane ring, uh, mundane belt, and a mirrored piece of mirrored glass. Uh, so these are all fairly, fairly simple things to make. Um, all it's going to require basically if you have a look at the amulet it's three string and one piece of gold uh, this is just four gold nuggets this one here is just three pieces of leather and a gold ingot and this here is just a piece of quicksilver and a glass pane with ten of each aspect in there to make that one and these are going to be used uh, for many many things later on down the line such as runic shielding you're going to need a mundane ring, uh, even, even just on a ring of runic shielding you need a ring, and then mon, uh, amulet of runic shielding, you're going to need an amulet, and you can have a belt of runic, girdle of run, runic shielding, sorry, and that's going to take a mundane belt. A couple of bits of aspects and stuff like that, so you are going to need these a little bit later on down the line. Uh, you got some really funky stuff on here as well, like emergency shielding. Uh, revitalizing and charge but we'll go into that all on another day and then the belt sort of you got a kinetic girdle one there and you'll come down and make the thermostatic one just a lot of uses for these things really and they're quite handy to have or just know how to make them on the quick sort of flip side you don't need any this to make uh, these three things here so they're quite easy to make Okay, so next bit we're going to have a quick look at is the thermometer. You should all know how to make this by now. Um, if you followed up this far, you definitely know how to make them. Uh, but it's a piece of glass with two gold ingots and any two shards will do. Uh, it doesn't even have to be the same shards. They can be all mixed up. And that will give you your thermometer. Very, very handy thing. You need this to start Thorncraft pretty much. Um, this will get you scanning everything like sand and night ore and what else can't scan dandelions grass yeah grass you can scan some grass scan some water this is going to give you aspect points to go do all your research which 
I'm not sure if I've showed you or not how to make the research table. I'll show you. I'll show you today how to make the research table as well. Right. So moving on, you want to turn these into a goggle form, which is what I'm wearing, as you can see, on my beautiful attire here. These big purple goggles of mine. This will allow you to see aura nodes um, as you're walking around. So we've got a node here. Is that a node? Yeah, that's an aura node. See, as you can see that, we can see that in daylight. Take them off, you can't see it at all. Uh, so they're really, really cool when you're going to go node hunting. Very, very simple thing again to make. You don't actually need any vis to make that, so I don't know why there's a wand in there. Uh, but this one here does require vis, and it's going to take two gold and gets two of your thermometers. So make an extra. You need to make three of them in total when you start off. One for scanning things, and then two for your goggles, because you're still going to want to have your scanning one on you. Uh, so you're going to need four leather, two pieces of gold, and five of, five of the primal vises, um, elemental vises, and then all in HP three and three, like so. And that will give you them. They, that will also give you a 5% discount with your uh, wand as well, as you can see here. 10% vis cost. 10% vis cost. I think 10% is as low as you can get, and I've got the best wand. Uh, which is creative only, so don't ask me where to get it. <laughs> um, so next piece I want to have a quick look at is the arcane lamp. Very, very, quite simple stuff to make. You find amber, you have to make an amber block. Uh, this is amber's found in the world. It only takes four of them to make an amber block, so that's pretty cheap. Takes a bit of night oil if you've got um, quite a good alchemical, alchemical setup. You'll be quite good. With Nitor, and that's not going to be too much of a problem to make. It's going to take eight vis on fire and air, and four on Petitio and aqua. And you need two iron ingots and a daylight sensor, which is probably the more expensive part of this, which is your nether quartz. Obviously, everyone tre treasures their nether quartz. Um, but once you make these, these things are so cool. I really like them. They're so nice. Look how they sit on the wall. They make really nice light sources. They sit on the floor. I think you can stick them on the ceiling as well. Let's have a look. Yeah, you can stick them on the ceiling like that and they even attach up. They look really, really nice. So you can have these in your house on the ceiling. Really, really cool stuff. And there's some infusion stuff, as you can see here. A um, little bit later on, which actually gives these um, additional uses. Uh, what else have we got? What else? Let's see what other uses it has. Um... Additional sources of light may also appear up to 16 blocks away, wherever light levels fall below accepted safe levels. Remember, only you can prevent zombie outbreaks. Okay, right, this is a mystical lamp, attaches to everything, and strong and steady light. Up to 16 blocks away, if you've got a dark spot which can spawn things, this will emit little particles of uh, emit little particles of light and stop them areas uh, from spawning things up, but only up to 16 blocks away, which is really, really nifty. Uh, it also says something about the arcane ball. When attached to the base of an arcane ball, the arcane lamp gains an additional ability. It will light up the tunnel that the ball digs. That's really cool, actually. So when we get down to the arcane ball, which is down here, basically this will tunnel things out. You can stick this on the bottom and it will light that entire tunnel up for you, which is really, really nifty. Um, and then they move on to having uh, more practical uses, which you see down here. But these are all infusion things, and I'll cover them another time. Cool. So the next piece I want to have a look at is the Arcane Levitator. This is probably one of my favorite things because it's really, really nifty. And it's just a really simple sort of gimmicky thing. Uh, why not True Flight? The Arcane Levitator is the next best thing. When placed, the Levitator lifts any item or creature above it up to 10 blocks into the air. A sneaking creature or player will slowly be lowered. Um, Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Each levitator placed upon another increases the range of and lift entities by 10 blocks. So a stack of three can lift entities up to 30 blocks. Levitators can be deactivated by applying a redstone signal to them. So you can enable and disable these with redstone, which is pretty nifty. Uh, but if you see here, we're going to go up about 10 blocks. So that's one, two, about 10. Once it starts bouncing us around, we level out about 10 blocks up. Cool. And then we just hold shift to come down again. So it's really, really cool way to have an elevator. And if we stack these things, so stack like five on there, that should take us up 50 blocks. Yep. Yep. Now when do we start bouncing? There. 126 blocks. 
If we come all the way down, it should be 76 blocks on the top of this one. Yeah, there you go. 75, 76 blocks there. So that's pretty nifty. And you can disable all them with redstone, like it says. So that's really, really cool. Uh, it takes a little bit to craft these. Not too much, though. Uh, four grated wood planks, two ingots, earth on top, air on bottom, with some night ore in the middle. It'll also require 10 air vis and 5 terra. Pretty nifty. Uh, so there's two more pieces I want to have a look at today. And these are just up in the corner here. We'll cover all the other bits and pieces in another video. Um, actually, I'm also going to cover the research tables. So this one here, we got the arcane stone. I'm pretty sure I've showed you guys how to make this before. It's pretty much just a shard, any shard in the middle with a smooth stone around the outside. It will give you nine of them and then you can break them down into uh, bricks or stairs or slabs. And these are then going to be used. These are used like a lot throughout. So if you're, even for your infusion or you're going to use the bricks. So you need quite a few of them. And they are quite nice blocks to actually build with. So the very first one I want to show you is the Paving Stone of Travel. By altering the magical structure of the Arcane Stone, you're able to create a paving stone that adds new bounce to the step of anyone walking across it. Anything walking across it will have greater speed and agility for a couple of seconds. So that's pretty nifty. Like, if we had to put... Like you see how slow we're walking at the minute? Uh, let's just put a row of these down like so. You can see how slow we're walking. And that's just walking speed again. And if I was to run, I'd go even faster. So that would be really, really cool for having like pathways or highways. And then you wanted to get somewhere faster around your base, like through a corridor. You could put all these down. And that would be the quickest way to do that. Next one, we have the Paving Stone of Warding. This is probably one of my favorite and the one I use the most. So we're just going to dig this out here for our quick demonstration. And we're going to have to grab, let's grab a pig. Right, so we're going to place the pig in there. As you can see, we're getting all these really cool barrier effects. That pig cannot move. This warding thing will stop anything else passing through it. Uh, obviously, other players can still cross it um, and stuff like that. So it says, you've discovered a way to turn an arcane stone blocks it into mystical wards that prevent most creatures from crossing them. It should be noted that these wards aren't always 100% foolproof and they cannot prevent other players from entering an area, but they'll keep most common threats at bay. They'll also prevent golems from crossing them. So even with your little golems, which you get from Thorncraft, the, those guys can't cross these. So if you need to combine them to an area, you can do that with this and it'll stop them derping about and running off elsewhere. Uh, for best results, you need an unbroken line of the, them between the areas you wish to protect and the outside world an active renso signal will disable the block color of the runes above the paving stone indicates its current status purple runes shown that it's currently preventing sight from passing through blue indicates it's been deactivated redstone signal red runes show that something is preventing it from fully warding an area and a gap exists where something might be able to pass through um I've never seen the color change on them. That's the thing. Uh, so I'm not too sure about that. Uh, but yeah, you can disable them again with redstone. And that is all I wanted to cover today. Just them little bits and pieces. Oh yeah, table, table, table. Right, so we're going to do this in the Thormonomicon. So table, very easy to make. Two full planks and three slabs across the top is going to make you a table. Uh, once you've got your table, you put two tables down with a scribing tools on top. Scribing tools are a glass vial or a glass bottle, feather, and some black dye, like it says there. And to refill them, you just use black dye on them. And basically, just place them two down together, and that will give you that arcane work table. I've showed you how to do this before, and I'm pretty sure I've showed you all of this, but table... Place down your table, use a wand on it, and it will make an arcane workbench. I'm pretty sure I showed you all that before, but just in case, there's a little summary of it for you guys. So thank you guys very, very much for watching. I hope you guys are having yourselves a very fantastic day. Please like the video if you liked it, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And we will cover, we'll get into more better stuff in the next episode, and we'll, I think we're going to go Enchanted Fabric way uh, next that's the next way that I'm looking at going and then looking at all of this stuff because that's the fun stuff. Uh, but thank you guys very, very much for watching. Like I said, have yourselves a very fantastic day and I'll see all of your beautiful faces in the next video. Goodbye.